our reflection this week is on chapter 5 verses 9 to 12 in James's letter and it's on patience. It seems to me that the letter from James is one of the most down-to-earth and practical books in the Bible. It contains solid, practical and loving advice about how to live together as individuals and as a faith community, as a congregation, how to live a life of faith. As you read the letter, you can hear the same themes that Jesus talked about as recorded in the Gospels and also the themes that we find in Paul's letters. Paul largely dealt with the theological principles and doctrine behind the issues arising from differences of practice and points of view in the churches he wrote to. James, however, writes with more practical advice on how to deal with differences and how to live together. Advice which we really need to hear in our churches and in our wider society today. Advice on how to live out a life of faith in difficult circumstances and where you and your church mess things up. And the advice is gentle and loving. I love it that throughout the letter the recipients are called brothers and sisters and particularly that they are often referred to as beloved. beloved. In our passage, they are called beloved three times. This letter is written by someone who understands them, loves them, and is eager for them to live out a life of faith. A life of faith that is attractive to those around. It is a sympathetic letter coming from someone who is focused on them. It comes from someone who knows and accepts that living together as a faith community, as a church, as a congregation, is not easy. The recipients of the letter must have been struggling, impatient for God to sort everything out, frustrated, perhaps with one another, Perhaps that their church is not growing, frustrated perhaps with their leadership, or perhaps the leaders are frustrated that they are not being followed, even that they are being obstructed. In their impatience, they are taking it out on one another, arguing, grumbling. In their impatience with God and one another, they are using stronger language, than is necessary or helpful. And that was long before Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, emails. All those places where we can send messages, fire them off without thought or reflection. But James reminds them of the need for patience. During the first lockdown, we, well that's my husband really, did a lot of work in our garden and we needed some new plants. My husband was very frustrated that the plants we bought were so small. He wanted instant results. But a gardener, a farmer, has to wait for the precious crop to grow. And they will. And in our waiting, there is no point in stomping around grumpily, blaming everyone else for the time it is taking. There is a call to a quieter, more meditative relationship with what we are waiting for. We are to enjoy, or at least let go, at least let go along with the process. Let things work out for themselves. We are not in control. The farmer plants the seed and it grows. He does not know how, as Jesus is recorded as saying in John's Gospel. Waiting is a spiritual discipline and it can be a gift. And patience isn't just waiting. Patience endows waiting with a special quality. It is not a coincidence that Paul lists patience as one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Waiting 
exercising patience is a place of powerlessness. We're not in control. In The Stature of Waiting, W. H. Vanstone places the gift of waiting in the context of suffering. He specifically places it in the context of Jesus being handed over to be crucified, giving up power and control over his own life. As we wait, as we exercise patience, I will quote Van Stone's concluding sentences, slightly amended for our circumstance. He writes that we are increasingly dependent on systems and machines, on organisation and technology, on medical support and social provision. And as we wait, we will in no sense be deprived of our higher calling, that of standing beside God and receiving into the transforming mirror of our consciousness what the world really is. Whenever we so stand in the future, as in the past and the present, we will be a figure of unique and unbelievable dignity. Amen.